Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Going live here on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Lisa Meta from metamorphize.com. We are active here. Yes, we are live. I am about intuition today. And we're celebrating because this is week seven. We did it. I did it. We did it. Seven week sensory experience. Good morning, Mindy. Mindy, you were in my meditation this morning. I'm going to write to you later. So, I mean, I want to celebrate the fact that I set out to do something. This is week seven of a sensory experience, and I did it. And I, I really love to, um, in essence, this was me following my intuition. And today we're going to be talking about awakening your sense of intuition. So if you've been with me on this journey, good morning, Liz. I have been doing the senses, right? And we always talk about five main senses, and those are the ones that we've done, right? I'll recap real fit fast. We've got what we see, what we smell, what we taste, what we touch, what we hear. But what we don't always talk about and develop is our sense of intuition. I had some fun this morning actually getting my thoughts together on this and um, I I want to first say okay wait hold on <laughs> let me get organized over here I got so I get so excited about these and if you stick around I'm actually I'm definitely gonna be pulling the cards um, oh Liz I think you missed this last week you too Mindy but um, I'm picking animal cards and I'm doing this also because talk about intuition I mean we can learn a lot from animals on following instincts and intuition. So I'm going to be talking about that in a minute. Let's just all get settled in here. So get whatever you need. Good morning, Roger. We're going to be talking about intuition. Um, get your beverage of choice. I say 20 minutes, but these end up going to about 40 because we do the reading. So we're going to be think of a see what card intuitively starts to come to you what number and in a little bit I'm gonna be taking a number we're gonna be picking cards and seeing what animal energy is your animal for today so um, well Mindy and Liz you already know about the self mastery lab Roger I can share with you and anyone watching the replay so today is the last this week is the last mini class for free and after that we're going to be moving all of the guest classes into the self mastery lab that is my monthly membership where you get content like this delivered directly to you by me inside of a monthly theme that we work two coaching calls two zoom calls with me some self inquiry work you get to work directly with me on anything that's going on in a private community that is growing every day and this is really, um, the Self Mastery Lab is a place for inquiry for you to start to just get clear about where you want to put your energy. Um, you know, if you work with me and you know anything about my style, I use a lot of nature as my guru to learn to uh, about myself and just how to use our surroundings to gain information, which is kind of a great segue into intuition. So you can check out the lab at metamorphize.com slash the lab. And if you are joining me this morning, say hi. I see Mindy and Roger. I don't know who else is here on Facebook. Waving, waving at everybody. So I would love to hear what, you know, if anything resonates with you during this or you have any questions, let me know. Because intuition was one of the, like, you know, it's, a, it's an abstract one. And I've had a lot of thoughts about this over the years kind of the the idea of like well what is intuition um, and what I'm excited about for Thursday is Monica my friend Monica Aparicio is going to be talking about how to develop your intuition which I actually sat with this morning and I was thinking okay intuition is something we develop or it's so it's it's there but we have to develop it or do we strengthen it you know it's it was one of these things where it made me think first and foremost if all of your senses 
if like let's say you know all this work we've done to awaken our senses so you're fully in all your senses it's almost as if I think you can hear your intuition you can sense your intuition feel your in intuition hear your intuition maybe even taste it and feel it so if you think about those words like can you you can touch your intuition I don't know hmm. you could feel it though you could feel your intuition so in some ways the awakening of all your senses is you being in your intuition for me that was like a moment this morning I was like wait hold on so it's less about you know focusing on what's my intuition here it's more about focusing on these other things that are quite tangible to to learn and then in essence when they all come together in alignment or in an awakening in an alertness and an awareness then your intuition is more acute you can hear it feel it see it sense it it becomes easier to navigate they also say a lot of the times you know that gut feeling and is a part of your intuition what do you think Liz Mindy Roger how do you what's like your idea around intuition is it something that you feel like you you listen to I do feel like I was I wrote here a note that it's like your higher self whispering in your ear and I say whisper because <laughs> I often feel like it's something we have to tune into and get to here with all the other noise that's happening and what is that noise those noise that noise is well the world around us other people's opinions your own stories um, your own illusions around what you think temptations the thought of what you want versus what you what's good for you um, so the definition of intuition is actually a form of knowledge which I thought was also very interesting to think of like intuition is knowledge so you're learn you when I think of knowledge it's something that I'm I'm learning something that I I have also in my repertoire as something to call upon um, it's my best skill but sometimes I wonder if I'm paranoid <laughs> it's your best skill interesting so you you know it's there but do you trust it is that what you're saying learning to fully trust your intuition as the voice of reason as the voice of the knowledge I think that's interesting to first let's all start on the baseline here together we all have intuition are we all listening to it at all times probably not um, I think just the the just this inquiry right now on you know how do we develop our intuition and I'm gonna share a few that really spoke to me that I you know I downloaded and then also just found and compiled a little and then again on um, Thursday Monica will go over her techniques on how to develop intuition I just this such a it feels so abstract but yet something we're probably doing all day long is trying to listen to our intuition when it comes to even the most basic decisions for me a lot of it's gonna be like how to navigate food what to eat managing my day like intuitively running my schedule or learning you know over the course of the time of being an entrepreneur how to intuitively listen to moving through my day without the, the white knuckling and the pressuring trusting that I'm going to get it all done especially like right now my business is going through so much at one time and I wake up and you know I've had days I've had months and days and years where it's like I wake up I know exactly what I'm working on I'm creating this and then there's other days it's really sloppy and messy and I have to meditate which is actually one of the um, ways to develop strengthen listen I'm not even sure the right word yet let's see Mindy I sometimes can't tell the difference between my head and my intuition well I think your head and your thinking well you know so one of the ones that came up on how to develop your intuition which is what we are doing by the way in the self mastery lab this month which with it which is the I feel versus the I think so learning to think less and feel yourself feel your way through more and that only comes with practice and it comes with 
you know, moving through your day asking yourself, how does this make me feel? After you eat a meal, how did I feel? How does that, how do I feel? Before, after you make a decision, it's like training yourself to tune into the I feel. And let me tell you, that wasn't my strength. I was a much more of like, what do I think? What do I think? What do I think? But you have to balance it out. It's like, well, what you're saying is if you can't tell the difference between the two, the head and the intuition, in some ways, is that you with the head and the heart? And it's like, you know, what do I feel is in your heart and what am I thinking is in your head? And when you can distinguish the two, you find your path to intuition. That's just one idea that I'm coming, it's coming to me right now. Um, so I, I will say that all the senses have led me to the, the main conclusion of, not that I didn't know this, but I, I really <laughs> got it down after one week after the other doing a different sense is we are meant to use the environment around us. We are supposed to co-create and collaborate with the environment around us to make decisions. That our senses, I kept saying they are this unused manifesting tool. Because, and this is kind of the thinking and the feeling and the, and the thing, it's like, if, you, if we're only, only inside, we're not engaging and with the world around us in a way that can help us make decisions. But if we're only outside, we are <laughs> flopping around not having our center. So I think really intuition is the dance of all the senses aware and awake, your ability to co-create with your environment around you, and I guess the last part for the intuition is to listen to the whisper that it can mask itself as something that feels wrong or unproductive maybe. And that leads me to this list. Let's go through this because this was really fun to come up with. Here are some of the ways that I think you can develop your intuition or you can get curious about trying in your life, okay? Hey, Kim. All right, first is is breath work. I got to lead with that one because, as you know, I'm a breath work practitioner, and breath work was one of the best and fastest ways that I got to know myself. I got to hear the difference between the lies and the illusions and the voices and also releasing tension that was holding me back like from experiencing flow in my body and flow in my body will lead to being able to flow in my life and to hear and to be more fluid. So that was one breath work. I'll stand by it till the end of time. <laughs> um, here's a random question. This is a question I'm having. I'm having two very cool debates with my friends right now. One is about the matrix, which I cannot get into right now because it's way too deep. Although it probably has to do with intuition. When you're in flow, do you believe you're in the matrix or out of the matrix? That's that inquiry. And the second one, oh no, I forgot. Hold on, hold on. <sighs> God. Um, oh, yes. Do you want to be awake for your last breath? Do you want to experience your last breath? And as a breathwork practitioner, that wasn't, it was, well, no, it was still a debate and it was still a conversation that we've been having. But I'd love to ask that question. And for me, I do, no matter what. And I know it can get kind of dark and, but I want to experience, after teaching like so many styles of breathing, I want, I want to know that last one, no matter what it is. Because lots of people are like, yeah, I just want to go in my sleep. Maybe that, maybe that is my, my destiny. Okay, so developing your intuition, breath work, meditation. It's pretty obvious, and, you know, I got up, I meditated this morning. Like I said, Mindy, you came to mind. I, had, I actually had a lot of people coming to mind. Actually, Liz, so did you. So I was thinking about the Self Mastery Lab. Um, but the thing is, is like, if the if the whis if intuition is a whisper and we need to learn how to listen past all the noises then you th you you know let's get real it's pretty obvious you need to get quiet enough and still enough to listen 
to all the voices, first of all, in your own head, and to start letting them kind of drain out and sort themselves out for you then to start to hear, well, lately, my biggest mantra, or my big, it's not even a mantra, my lifestyle path at this moment is follow the thread. And to follow the thread, you need to be paying attention to what's going on, be listening, to be um, aware of what I want. You know, I'm still in Mexico land. So people who are coming through that say have the words Mexico. I met with a random girl yesterday, a lovely lady. I'm so excited that I followed the thread. It was like a connect to the connect to the connect, and it could have disappeared. And I said, hey, you know what? We have Mexico in common. Let's have a coffee. And boom, I have somebody who wants to show me around when I get to Mexico City. And these are the ways that, you know, I think to bring practical manifesting into your life is to do these tiny little outreaches and these ways that you're in your own way, like following threads, connecting dots. And once you get into the habit of doing it, to me, I'm in my, I'm in a matrix. I'm in the matrix where like infinite possibilities are here for me. So following intuition, it's not so complicated anymore. It used to be like I couldn't tell what intuit the difference between intuition or fear or the voices in my head. I mean, I was like, I definitely could not have had this conversation about feeling more in tune with my intuition like a good few years ago. This work it has developed it with me and for me. And you know what? One of the things here in um, developing your intuitions is testing your hunches. I love that one. And if that's one thing you could take away from this intuition uh, talk today, this Tuesday talk in tarot, is test your intuition. I have a dear friend, Natalie. She does that with energy. It's amazing. But how are you going to know if it's intuition and if it's the right path or the wrong path or the productive path or the unproductive or whatever you're going to value on, put value onto it if you don't test it? And what if you test it and you realize, oh wait, I listened to something and look where it led me versus ignoring it. I mean, that's not going to do anything. It just shoves it back down. And to develop something is to practice it. To practice it is to try things out. And you could go the wrong path which leads to another develop your intuition, which is try something different in your routine. Escape your daily routine, fine, that's a vacation style. Or I love to try, like, if I'm traveling, I very rarely will go the same route anywhere. Like, I always want to see a different route until the route becomes something, um, like, of a try all the routes to find the efficient route or try all the routes to then decide what kind of route I want. So doing different routes though keeps you more alert because you're paying attention to, oh, I'm not just on robot anymore. And what did we just say in the beginning? If you're not on robot, you're more likely to be inside of your senses. And if you're in your senses and you're awake, alert, and active, your intuition can be a lot, you can hear it. Hear it, see it, feel it. Touch it. Touch it. <laughs> All right, breath work. Meditate. Test your hunches. Consult your body compass. And this is back to the thing Mindy wrote or inspired what, from what Mindy wrote, which is feel, not think. Look, I will be the first person to say that I am the most cerebral, analytical, sometimes obsessive. In fact, the work that I'm doing here is coming from the fact that um, I had an obsess I had obsessive thinking and I was literally driving myself insane. So mind mastery coach is the is directly coming from the fact that I had to learn how to master my mind or else I was going to go insane. <laughs> um, so practicing how do I feel to balance out some of the how do I think is was a helpful path for me especially since a lot of what I was working with had to do with feeling really full or feeling really empty. And I met, mean that metaphorically and literally. So feelings also, we have a tendency to shove down, numb out, um, avoid, eliminate, the, the core feeling that's deep in there 
which is why I think intuition becomes a whisper because we're not listening to it and it becomes dull. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it type of thing. So I guess, you know, that a lot of this was, so here's a question. Do you, do you all think that like intuition is kind of like a muscle, like you have to practice it? It's a question, you know, like, or how about here, on a scale of one to 10, how in tune are you with your intuition? 10 meaning, 10 being like on point. Let me think about that. How, how, I would say right now, Mm. Nine's pretty high right now. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna. My, my intuition said to go with an eight. <laughs> I'm gonna go with an eight. I on a scale of one to ten, how in tune are you with your intuition? Ten being on point, like you're like riding that wave, the flow, flow wave. You want to learn, Roger? Yes, I know. <laughs> you want to learn tantric breath. You know, I would define tantric breath because that's just a term that gets thrown out there. It's not really, see, tantric breath is not necessarily what, you, ask yourself what's the outcome you're looking to achieve when you're saying I want tantric breath. Not outcome, experience. Because are you looking to have a breath exchange with someone where you are actually in sacred partnership? Because that's kind of what I'm looking for, a sacred partnership where breathing together which is a style of being together is something that we do as a part of our practice. But tantric breath, you could throw that word out. I mean, you could do tantric breath right there sitting with yourself right now. I mean, you could have an entire experience with yourself. But anyway, today's not about tantric breath. Today's about intuition. However, breath work can and will, and I can stand by that, get you to um, hear your intuitive, your inner dialogue way quicker and faster. So any questions you have on on uh, intuition or thoughts that you want to share? Okay, you, oh, I see here, great, great. You're an eight out of, wait, 81, 81, two? Seven, eight? Seven, eight, okay. Wait, I don't get, Antonio, I think that's your name, right? Oh, eight and a half. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> eight, okay, I was reading it as 81 slash two. Got it. Okay, so escaping your daily routine. I mean, look, nature is my guru. Spending time in nature will get you really tuned in, especially if you sit there and you are in deep inquiry about nature. Look at it. See the connectivity of it, how every single thing is connected individually and collectively the ecosystem the the life cycles the way they inter everything interacts with each other it's like yesterday i was on with my best friend and we were talking about relationships and i was you know i'm having one right now <laughs> and i was um we were saying nature is my guru and she's out living in the in the woods up at her farm and I was like okay wait so let's just look let's look at nature right now what is the question that I could ask nature to support me in what I'm doing right now and it was like so simple in nature almost every almost okay this is not that's the thing is that these exceptions and then we get caught up there are exceptions which is what makes it hard because then we get caught up thinking that we're the exception and I've done that for a long time thinking, well, I can be the exception. And we, you know what? I can't. But I think it's safer to move through thinking you're not and then be ex excited that you became an exception. Anyway, that's I digress. Almost everything in nature when it comes to um, male and female animals, the male courts the female. The male is the elaborate, beautiful color, which is funny how that does not translate in human form because in humans the woman is like wearing the high heels and the makeup and always have you know see me pick me want me look at me it doesn't that does not happen in nature you men put on those high heels and some makeup I had to get up and you know do this this morning I like doing it but do I like doing it because I like doing it or because I live in a society that yeah 
another conversation. All right. So spending time in nature. Thanks for going on that tangent with me. The next one of developing your intuition is learn from your past. I mean, it's a roadmap of what to do and what not to do. <laughs> And it, isn't it a biatch because sometimes we just keep doing that same thing over and over even though we don't want to be doing it? Why do we do that? Well, that's exactly what I teach. That's the science of the brain. That's the understanding that that program is running. And even though you're aware of it, you can't necessarily stop it yet because it's running and you don't, have not learned the pattern interrupt, the click, click. I just talked click click over in self mastery lab click clicks powerful so feel more think less learn from the past align with your values I mean that's just a great one of like pulling you forward that's just a manifesting technique in and of itself if you become aware of the dots ahead of you that you want to be attaching to so one of them is your values like here's an easy one you know like I don't date a, a, anyone who smokes cigarettes, right? So if I meet someone, I'm not, it's kind of like you, you, that's a part of my value is health, thinking about your lungs. <laughs> um, and so it becomes easier to get into your yeses and your noes when you have your values and your boundaries. And then, I mean, maybe intuition isn't this mysterious thing after all. Maybe... I mean, I didn't think any of you said that in some ways I thought it was. Maybe the more you know what you want, the more you know your yeses and your noes, the more boundaries that you set out and the more values that you can align to, then the more you can hear your intuition. How hard can it actually be at that point? And then you stand in that. And that's maybe one of the steps is standing in your value, standing in your the alignment of the things that you want, not caring what will happen what you think will happen if you don't or if you do okay moving on here moving your body always a great one I mean stir things up shake it up move your body move your life I mean my 30 days to change program is literally based in that concept and then the last one which I think is probably up there as one of the main ones and I saved it for last is developing a relationship with resistance I mean that is probably the number top three things that I work with on people and to develop a relationship with resistance is to develop a relationship with the dialogue that's going inside of you which is usually attached to the stories so it's learning how to turn your inner critic into your inner coach so that you can move through resistance faster and let the voice of intuition guide you, you know, like letting fear be the guide, letting resistance be the gatekeeper to the thing that you want. And it's not holding you up as, as much as I know that it had for me in the past. So that's exciting to think that there are ways to develop your intuition. I love that. So here we go with the animal cards. If you're still with me here today, thank you so much for sticking it through. Give me a number. We're picking animal cards, and like I mentioned last week, these are um, this is a deck I've had for a long time, and I I don't I haven't memorized it. So we're going to be learning together. So what is a number? Maybe you want to use your same number. No okay, <laughs> thirteen. Gotcha, Liz. Let's see here. Pick the numbers: twenty-one, thirteen, twenty-one. All right. Mindy, Roger, you still with me over here on Facebook? Mindy, you're a five six with the intuition, more like a one. Roger, I don't think that really. I mean, I don't want to one with your intuition. Well, your intuition brought you here to this talk, so you, something's going right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let me see, did I cover everything? Oh yeah, I did. I love this line. Your intuition is a personal, intimate conversation between you and the life force energy that infuses all. All right, 13. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Let's see. All right. 
anyone else here? Mindy, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mindy, you're never going to believe it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, Liz, armadillo. Okay, so we're using animal cards today and especially today because I, I mean, we believe, right, that the animals really are in their instinctual, like, they're in their instincts. They know their yeses and their noes really well. And armadillo, number 28. Now, look at that shell skin outer layer there. Boom. Do you have anything to say about an armadillo? Let's see, armadillos. I always like to think about them as an animal before armadillo. <laughs> like, what do you think of it before we even look it up? 28. I mean, it looks like it's got, it, it could be secure because it's got that protective outer shell. It's also kind of like, like a slinky. But it doesn't, is it very agile? I don't know. So here we go. They are surreal, otherworldly. I know, look at this face. Do you see that? Or that whole body, what a creature. Whoa, it's almost like a rock. Okay, armadillo. What? Liz, and everyone, don't forget, this is a collective reading, but this is exactly what I was just saying. So the armadillo, it stands for boundaries. And I was, I was just saying, your yeses, your noes, your boundaries, your values is one of the ways to strengthen your intuition because it helps with the parameters and the perimeters and the whole where the, because what, remember infinite possibilities and, and um, just like the in, po potentiality of everything, we must have boundaries. You, you have to create your own guide inside or else it, you know what, or else it really is hard to make a decision. And it wasn't until I learned less is more for my clothes and for my life that decision making became easier. You know what, too many options causes way suffering for me. Boundaries. So let's see here. Armadillo wears its armor on its back. Um, it's medicine. Okay. It's medicine, a part of its, oh, the armor on its back is a part of its medicine. It wears it. Its boundaries are safety. The boundaries of safety are a part of its total being. Armadillo can roll into a ball and never be penetrated by its enemies. It goes into a ball. How cool. Oh, my God. What a gift it is to set boundaries. Interesting. All of the answers to these questions relate to setting up boundaries. If the armadillo waddles into your cards, it is, to it is time to define your space. I love this for you. I love this. You may have been too willing to let your home become a bus station or, yeah, this is about no saying no. It's time to ask yourself the following questions. Am I honoring the time I need for my personal enjoyment? Do others treat me like a doormat? Do I always get upset when I'm taken for granted? We know what boundaries mean. So there you go, Liz. Maybe making a list of boundaries, defining it so you can flow back to water. You know, flowing, even a river. If, if a river has its banks, those are the boundaries of a river, and it knows exactly how to flow. All right, 19, Antonio, Buffalo. I feel like we got this last time. Did you get this last time? I think you were, this is crazy. Okay, so let's look at the Buffalo, I because I remember looking at head down and ears, it was hard to look at the ears there. I'll know it when I see the, the word. Anyway, buffalo, even if we got it before, we got it again because buffalo medicine is here for us to learn something. It's prayer and abundance, and we did get it because I remember reading this. 
you know, and when it comes to intuition, I think praying, well, prayer for one, and abundance will come. <laughs> it's kind of like step one and step two. So, and you bought this deck, so you could read, um, you could read this on your own. So I'm just going to hit the top part of it, which is basically, oh yeah, we did. Let me see if I can read something different about it. This is the white buffalo. It's very sacred in the Native American tradition. The appearance of the white buffalo is a sign that prayers are being heard. Oh yeah, because I was bugging last time we got it about, um, we got it about, I was doing the hearing sense. And it was like, oh my God, your prayers are being heard. I think intuition is, a, is almost like being able to hear the prayer, hear the thing that you want, consistency. Well, also repetition, if you get, if we get the same animals, which an, we have another one, which is the same, it just means you're still working with that medicine. Like, I don't always think it's, that's important for, keep switch, 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 like affirmations. I work with the same affirmation for a while before I switch it. The, it naturally switches, actually. Um... Buffalo was a major source of sustenance for the Plain Indians. It gave meat for food, hides for clothing. Oh, that's what makes it abundant. Warm and soft buffalo robes for long winters and hooves for glue. Wow, so this animal is an abundant animal. It, it gave its life for them to live. They had to also learn to listen to their intuition big time when you live in, in, out in survival land survival mode which if you don't know this I am my side hobbies are like survivalist MacGyver fixing things my brother I have two brothers so there are, and my dad mechanical engineers chemical engineers all engineers like in our house you learn to fix things and maybe that's how I got here is it's all about problem solving all right because of the desire to give the gifts okay so here you go Prayer and abundance. Love it. Mindy, look, the skunk. <laughs> so I'm laughing because Mindy and I were doing, I was picking a card, which by the way, self-mastery people, I'm doing a card reading today and there. Um, I picked the skunk in the self-mastery lab, so we were reading about it. And I guess it's, it's still time to strengthen skunk energy. That's super interesting. So I love the skunk. Look at it. It's such a beautiful, unlike this. So this is really interesting, right? Flowy tail doing its little skunk thing. This one hard edge can turn into a ball. This is like, no, but listen, both of these animals have a don't mess with me. Don't fuck with me energy, okay? This one, can't touch this. Da -na -na -na. Da -na. <laughs> Can't touch this. I mean, literally, it's going to roll away. This one can't touch this, but what does it do? Pepe Le Pew it does. And this is about reputation. So interesting, they both probably have, like, Mindy, what are you thinking? Let me see. I can't see some of this stuff. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so the skunk, just to remind us, is about reputation. I mean, I feel like if we all were like walking and we saw a skunk, we would be like, yeah, I'm not going to get too It's not. This isn't the type of animal you're like, let me go pet this animal right now. <laughs> this is like, I'm going to observe from afar because I have R-E-S-P-E-C-T for this thing. It has a reputation. It's beautiful. It knows, and look, it's so elegant with this little tuxedo black and white thing. Um... I love the, the poem in this one. If anybody gets this book, they all have these poems that are associated with the animals, and they're so beautiful and very short. This one said, Skunk, tell me the story so I will so I will know it well of how to attract and how to repel. And when Mindy and I were looking at this card the other day, that was my big aha moment because I was like, wait, it's not just about repelling. It's also about attracting skunk smell like skunk smell you know I'm sure they love each other's smells and they're distinguishing which smell is the one they want to meet with skunk people have the ability to attract so this is also Mindy very attached to intuitive senses because when you're in your intuition you are attracting you are like you're literally vibrating and attracting 
what you want. You're also repelling what you don't because you're clear. So at the same time, so they have the ability to attract others and they are very charismatic. At the same time, the other side of their natural power is to repel those who seek to take energy from them without recycling the gifts they've taken. Mindy, that's boom right there. I'm going to read that at the same time. On the other side of their natural power to repel, they repel those who seek to take energy from them without recycling the gifts they have taken. Ugh, the takers. Skunk medicine people also know how to use the energy flow that will attract a lover. Some people call it the sexual magic. Skunk medicine, it is good to learn how to handle energy flows. Yep, we talked about that. If you have chosen this symbol, you are being asked to notice the kinds of people you are attracting in your life. Notice who you're attracting. All right, anybody else here want a card? Oh, what up, Herb? If you're here, let me know if you want me to pick you an animal card. Tino Art, what's up, what's up? Do you want a card? Give me a number. I'm just going to, I'm reading, Liz, what you wrote. They're perfect. Back to the armadillo. Um, yeah, zero fucks type of animal. Safety is huge for me right now. Yeah, well, safety and boundaries are really, they go together because my intuition keeps taking me time. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, six. We're going to do one more. Herb, if you're here. I'm going to pick a card for you. If not, here we go. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I love these cards so much, right? These are, these are really fun. Wow, butterfly. What a beautiful card. Number nine, butterfly. Of course, I'm so attached to butterfly. I got you, Herb, on four. I'm so attached to butterfly. Oh, next time, I know what we could do. We'll pick, we'll pick numbers, and then I'll go directly to that number because these all have numbers. Okay. Um. You know, Metamorphize is the name of my company because my middle name is Meta. And then the fact that I feel like I support people, well, then the science of change is my program. It's kind of like the art of, of transformation. So this one means a lot to me um, personally, but also how cool that you got it. All right, here we go. What did I say? Nine. All right, nine. And um, when it comes to intuition, because that's what we're talking about today, I think being in your, I'm sorry, I skipped it over here. Butterflies and transformation have so much to do with if the, the more you're in your intuition. So yeah, the word for this is transformation. The more you're in your intuition, the more you're allowing yourself to transform, which is your birthright, which is your natural way of being. We are here to evolve and change and grow and move, move, elevate. So transformation, the power that butterfly brings us is akin to air. <laughs> it is it is the mind and the ability to know the mind or to change it. Ooh, I like that because so many times it never deals with that. Like, if you've ever heard my story, almost everyone has probably heard this three times, but the idea of the um, permission to change your mind, basically, is when um, I heard this story about... Uh, Osho, the Indian mystic that I've studied a lot of his discourses, he talks for hours and hours and hours, and he had a whole freaking room of people or outside, hundreds and hundreds, and basically that he went through this entire discourse, and at the very end said a, said a contradictory statement, and at the very end when he made that contradictory statement, someone in the room was like, but you just said da 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 da, and he goes, I changed my mind. And it's like, here we have these gurus that are, are telling us all this wisdom. And, oh wait. We have all these gurus that are telling us all this wisdom. And then we're like standing there like believing, believing, believing. But the truth is that we're allowed to change our mind. And what we thought or believed, believed one minute, we can change our mind and think something different. Because why? We're get, maybe something new, new information came in that gave us a different perspective. 
I mean, last night basically talked with this girl and realized that perspective shifting is really the name of the game and it's really what I'm here to do. All of this, what we're doing here, talking about animals, and is just to open up the possibility of seeing something different. Because if you could see it different, then you can give yourself the opportunity to slowly make a change. You could slowly transform. Transformation does not happen overnight. Do you think this butterfly, no, comes out of the cocoon in two seconds? No. And in fact, like I've talked about this with the chick, and I think it happens also with the butterfly that if you take a butterfly out of its cocoon and you also help a chick come out of an egg it actually will lack the strength it needs to survive through the next phase kinda like a premature baby so transformation takes time um, it has stages it goes through the stages here in the book the egg stage the larva stage the cocoon stage the birthing stage so at maybe for you um, ask yourself you know what stage of transformation are you in like is it time to go inward right now and listen to that intuition are you in a bust yourself out phase so that's that one butterfly can give clarity to your mental process so I guess by going into a cocoon you can start to hear yourself um, all right four herb one two three four oh we got this last time too the blue heron Interesting that a lot of repeats. I'm kind of curious about that because this is a big deck. <laughs> um, let's see here. It's a big number too, 45. Herb, what are you thinking? Do you know anything about the blue herring? It's a bird. Birds, I love because I always talk about their... Bird. Oh, yeah, self-reflection. Self-reflection. Here it is. Intuition has so much to do with self-reflection. The best way to have it, your develop your intuition is to get, get to know yourself. That's for sure. So the power of knowing the self is by discovering the gifts and facing its challenges. It is the ability to accept all feelings and opinions without denying any emotion or thought. Heron flies over those who are unaware of who they are and where they belong in the world. Wow. Gently dropping a blue feather to them, Heron asks that they follow their intuition and begin the empowering journey of self-realization. Could not make up how this stuff goes. I'm telling you, I'm in the matrix. When I'm in the matrix, for me, it's like all the dots start to like appear. And... The fact that it even just used the word intuition. So this is follow, you're helping others by dropping the feather to follow their intuition and begin the empowering journey of self-realization and for you as well. Wow. Hola, Nancy. Cuatro. Okay, okay, okay. That magnificent. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, we just did four. We'll do it again. Black Panther. Look at that. Another big number. 52. And then this is the last one. If you want more of this, you could join the Self Mastery Lab. This is what we do more deeply over there. Here we go. Jaguar. -a. Nope. Panther. Woo! -wee! Nice one, Nancy. This is about embracing the unknown which talk about intuition I mean intuition and embracing the unknown have so much to do with this feeling that we can't see it we can't wh where is it uh, it's like in the dark but following the hints and the clues and the hunches and making your way through like sliding like that black panther and actually if you slow down and you take the step and you check into the feeling and not the thinking as you're walking like this panther you start to tune in your hearing your seeing your feeling your smelling the panther is using all its senses to be embracing the unknown and in every moment the unknown becomes known it unfolds itself moment by moment that's super powerful so I'm going to leave you on that note here, that embracing the unknown is never as hard as, it think, as you think. 
the un and the unknown is more known than than you realize. I have a whole audio on that if you're curious about it. Think about it. What you didn't know once, you now know. So it's a constant unfolding of information, which really sums up this whole series right now. Thank you for being here on the seven-week sensory experience. This is week seven, your intuition. Stay, come on um, 4 o'clock on Thursday on my Facebook group for the intuition mini class by Monica Aparicio. And um, if you want more like this, I'm going to be making some changes. So a lot of this stuff is going to be happening over in the self-mastery lab and not here anymore. So if you want some, some more of this and some more of me, metamorphize.com slash the lab is $49 a month and um, look I'm really dedicated to your growth and to your to your evolution and to help you have and be and, and experience what you want in your life and it, it really happens with just staying steady and consistency and being with people that are like doing it you know I think that's it's one of the most powerful things is to be in a group of people who are living the life and doing it and showing up and rerouting their mind on a regular. That's how you really make the changes. It doesn't have to be as hard as you think. So I love you all. May you develop your intuition so strongly that you're just floating in life, enjoying every minute. And I will see you next week. Not sure what I'm doing, actually. You'll see. I'll, I'm going to tune into my intuition. And um, oh yeah, we didn't even really talk about the third eye. But when I think of intuition, I think about tapping into the unseen, the third eye. So um, if you have any topics that you want me to talk about, you know, feel free to send them my way and um, I can entertain, you know, making a series or sharing about what it is that you want to hear about. All right. Think about what you think about, everyone. Be the creator of your life and I'll see you soon. Reach out if you want to join the lab or um, work with me privately. Bye.